Hi church, how are you? It's Rob here. Uh, I have the privilege, uh, I've been asked to come and share a little bit today. Um, so thank you for your time. I really appreciate uh, lending in here so I can uh, just share what I feel like the Lord is uh, pressing on um, my heart. Um, today I wanted to talk about another one of, uh, I guess, our core values as a couple, myself and Jen. Jen isn't uh, with us today, sadly she's sick. Um, but she's with us in spirit and she'll be watching uh, when this is actually going out. Uh, so this core value that I wanted to talk about is all around culture. Um, you, some of you already kind of know just by me saying that where that's probably going to go. Uh, culture has quite recently become kind of a big Christian, um, Christianese buzzword. Uh, everyone's mind already probably knows where I'm going. If you don't, that's a good thing because uh, I can help shape what I'm going to talk about. Um, so culture in general, as most of us knows, is the uh, behaviours, the ideas, the uh, things you think of when um, you're thinking about a certain type of society. So if you're talking about a certain people group, they'll have their own culture. Um, but then we ourselves also have our own type of culture. And so I want to talk about the culture that Christians are living in, the culture of the world at the moment and a little bit on how we can develop the church ourselves um, by embracing maybe some of the ideas that I put forward in the next 15-20 minutes. Um, first of all we're all affected by culture I think um, whether we want to say that we are or we're not we are. Um, culture today dictates whether you will walk to the shops in clothes or not wearing clothes. Um, culture today dictates how you will speak to someone, uh, what language you'll choose to use. Um, everything from absolutely how you walk, how you talk, how you address others, how you spend your time. Culture is riddled into your into your into yourself and, and, and what you're you're willing to do and what not willing to do. So you could say that you aren't part of a culture, but just by your everyday life and the way you conduct yourselves within society shows that you're actually part of a culture. And as Christians, we are involved in our own culture, a Christian culture. And whether we like it or not, um, that culture starts to define that how we will and won't um, interact with each other. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about what sort of cultures are going on, um, what sort of cultures we can form, how we can form them, uh, how do we get people to buy into them, how do we work towards them um, and do it within a healthy way. And this core value that uh, myself and Jen live for, uh, one of the things we live for is we call it honour affirms value. Um, and it, it, it basically means how we honour one another reinforces um, what Jesus says about each other um, and our behaviour in our culture will reflect that so we don't or won't treat people in a way that doesn't reflect the view or thoughts of Jesus towards a person um, and so there are certain behaviours that cannot coexist within an honouring culture. Um, so. Um, I remember talking to uh, someone about, I was working with them on a project to try to shape the culture of a certain environment and uh, it was quite an interesting story and I just, this is not on my notes but I just felt to share this and it was quite funny because um, we were in a startup and we were, we were trying to uh, create an environment where people thrived, people were loved, uh, ultimately that people started to look more and more like Jesus um, and then in return more people would see that and want to be a part of that and then they would come and encounter Jesus and uh, it, was, it was quite funny and so I started to just articulate to them like okay well if we're going to create this culture we need to be able to articulate it we need to be able to um, say in this culture um, we will or will not gossip obviously in a good honour and culture not gossiping is one of those things where we can say okay we're not going to gossip uh, and as part of that culture that we're creating if anyone decides to gossip 
um, because we've all bought into this culture where we're not going to gossip we're going to just call them higher and say hey look like that's not cool you probably wouldn't like it if someone was doing that to you or speaking bad about you so could you stop and then just moving on you know and just and just ignoring it um a culture uh we were, i was looking with these people to build was um a culture where we reinforce the good and we ignore the bad not like we're like dogs <laughs> um but generally speaking if you reward what's good and you ignore um unless it's really toxic and you have to discipline generally you ignore what's not good you will start to uh, encourage people to behave in a certain way so for example um if somebody is in the church uh going out and um uh seeing the dead raised uh, we obviously want to encourage that so uh, you would give them a platform to share that testimony thus encouraging them and others uh and reinforcing that that is a positive thing to have within a culture and so the more you reinforce that that positive reinforcement the more people will want to go out and do it so for example praying for people on the street regardless of outcome um being generous uh being kind being loving you know taking people in doing things that is like christ-like and so i was with this church and we were working um on this project and uh and then they were like oh that sounds really good i would love a love a culture like that and uh and then um so i was like okay so one of the things that we need to do on this journey is actually sit down uh, as a leadership and start to be able to articulate that so that we have um predefined um things that we do and don't do as i was just saying and uh I'll just share a story. It's quite funny. I, I um, when I first moved out of my house, went somewhere and stayed in a house with seven seven men, uh, seven boys really. Well, we ended up men, but we started off as boys. Uh, so we're all eighteens, uh, twenties, fairly young. Um, and uh, when we got in the house, we uh, we said uh, yeah, we want we want to live in a clean house. And so we all decided, yeah, we're going to live in a clean house. Um, and then as the weeks went on, we discovered pretty quickly that every single person had a different idea of what clean is, you know. Um, some people um, would think clean is they've, uh, they've put their dishes in the kitchen and left them for a couple of weeks because at least it's not in their bedroom and that to them was clean. Uh, other people um, would feel like uh, clean to the other extreme was like they couldn't have a bin in the house um, overnight. So at the end of every day, the bin had to be emptied. Um, it became quite apparent quite quickly. Everyone at the start was really, really keen to say, yeah, I really want a clean house. But when it came to actually defining what a clean house was, everyone had their own idea. And that then became something that became more challenging because when we sat down to say oh I, I want this and I want that and lots of people suddenly said whoa 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 I don't want to empty the bin every day or other people was like I don't think we should clean the toilet every day other people were like oh I thought cleaning the toilet once a month was a lot <laughs> and so you you had to have this conversation because just saying I want a clean house doesn't actually say anything um and so in Christian church world, what we can sometimes have as churches is like, oh yeah, we just want just a, a Jesus culture, you know, or a kingdom culture. And it's like, okay, that's, that's awesome. So what does that look like? And they're like, it just looks like Jesus. And you're like, okay, what, what, but what does that look like? It's just Jesus, isn't it? And you're like, oh, okay. And uh, so I was working on this particular project and, and it became apparent quite quickly that um, there wasn't much desire to actually articulate something, create accountability to it and chase after it as a team. There was just more like, that sounded good, but we don't actually want to pay the price for it. And so a culture of honour um, and this core value that I'm going to go into uh, has accountability to it. It has a, um, a measuring stick. And as a church, if we're going to achieve a culture that is healthy, one that we can have other people go, oh wow, those people are really, really nice, those people are really kind, um, those people don't speak bad about people, those people are generous, 
if we want people to actually see the church in that way it's going to have to be articulated and the reason why we want to articulate it is because then we can create accountability to it and so once we've created accountability to it um, if someone then is falling short of it we can talk to them and it's not like um, oh you're not cleaning you're not emptying the bin every day and the other person's going well I didn't I didn't sign up to empty the bin every day and then the other person's like yeah but you said you were going to be clean and he's like yeah but that's that's too clean and then you're getting into the point where everyone is 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 confused because what we're having in church is like yeah but we're we're having a Jesus culture here so you can't do that and it's like well I, I didn't sign up for that and it's like oh <laughs> and so but when it's articulated, say, for example, yeah, as a body, we're not going to gossip. So when someone says, you know, or does something that just, uh, it just doesn't f add up, it, there's no shame in it. It's, it's pure and simple. If someone started talking negatively about someone else, you could just turn around and say, hey, look, look we're, that's not what we're going after here. So if you want to kind of interact with me, you could do that somewhere else, but I'm not going to entertain it. And then suddenly the person won't be like, oh, but I was just, you know, seeking wisdom on that person for Jesus, Jesus culture, seeking wisdom about them. So how I could address it. It's like, no, actually, we're going for an honouring culture um, because we believe an honouring culture reflects Christ. And actually, as part of that, gossip isn't a part of it. And we've all agreed not to do it. So if you want to gossip somewhere else and so long and short of it when we start to articulate a culture and we start to buy into that culture together we actually have some stability to hold each other to um, and call each other up to and so that's what this core value underlines is about creating a culture um, a culture which we determine instead of is determined by the world a culture which we decide to shape off of Jesus rather than shape off of what the people think the Christian should be like or the wider world thinks the Christian should be like. Um, it, it's about having something that we can be accountable to so that way we can actually measure it and see how well we're doing at it. You know, if, if we're failing, it's measurable rather than it just being and not being having any having any measuring sticks that actually are we succeeding at this or not like for example well how generous have we been this month have we actually given away as a church have we given this money uh, ha as a church have we been giving our time um, as a church have we been kind have we have we been have we heard gossiping about are, are we are we going after that are we stopping that are we investing into people? Are we prophesying over people? And we can start to actually look at the things that we've signed up for as a culture and say, ah, oh, we're doing that or not. And so I'm just going to... Um, just want to be cautious of time. So a culture of honour is um, a culture that's probably you've heard a lot about now. There's a great book on it um, by Danny Silk. Um, it's uh, something that, in that book, it really starts to articulate what a culture of honour could look like. It starts to challenge um, some things that we may have done as Christians before. Um, and so I would really advise looking at it because it may start to break your box of what you think honour looks like. Uh, a lot of it, as you read it, will just be a eureka moment after eureka moment where you're just, you're just going, oh, yeah, that makes way sense because that's way kinder. And I don't know why we haven't been kind. Um, I want to, um, I guess I, I just want to now just focus on this this core value that, that, that we have, which is, is called, we, we articulate as honour affirms value. Um, and what that means is to say, as we honour one another, we establish each other in who they are and who we are. And that's a simple simple description really of that that aspect of Christianity for us as a couple um, we like to be able to say the truth about others and ourselves so that way we stay in right standing with Jesus because if we start to say less than our less than what's true about ourselves or others and uh, normally actually in all of us it normally starts with ourselves. actually normally rarely do people just start going around attacking people normally it starts with 
small little criticisms you start accepting of yourself oh, I'm not good enough oh, I've done I haven't done good enough I'm not I'm not holy enough I'm not worthy enough you know and as we start to listen to those things we can actually see them leak into the way we talk or address others um, so honor and affirms value um, I want to talk about quickly about value um, and honor uh, they are actually in the Greek word in the way Greek in the language in the Greek language they're kind of interchangeable um, and what I mean by that is if we look in the Bible uh, it says the word for honor is called Tima or it looks like it's written like time but it's Tima um, and uh, it it's in the Bible 35 times sorry 45 times this word is in the Bible 35 times it's translated to honor eight times it's translated into price. And so the same word is used interchange, interchangeably between honor and price. Um, and so I just want to touch, uh, explain what, what's going on there. So um, in, in society, um, if, you were to, if you were to ask a Greek person 2000 years ago, what, what they would mean um, by Tima, they would say it means to pay the correct price. Um, so, for example, if you were to go into a shop and the shop says the bar of chocolate is one pound and you were to pay a pound for it, that transaction would be called Tima. It would be paying the correct price um, because you paid the price, that the value of the chocolate. Um, if we look at uh, human beings for a moment about or if you look at anything everything has a price so for example if you decided you needed to renew your passport you'd have to pay uh, like 50 pounds now if you would look into um, insure your car you would have to pay a, a few hundred pounds like everything has a price and if you were to, to pay that correct price you would be doing what's called Tima. You would be paying the right value. And so value, um, interestingly, this is an interesting, I'm trying not, I'm trying not to, I'll, I'll start to tie up some of these rabbit trails in a minute and try not to go too far out. Um, value is always, the value of something is always determined by the highest price anyone would pay for it. Um, and so if we're going to determine the value of a car, um, the value of the car that you're trying to sell is always going to be the highest price someone is going to pay for it. And the reason why that is, if you put your car outside your house and you just said, my car's for sale, who's going to pay for it? And uh, one person comes along and says, I'll pay £500 and someone else says, I'll give you £1,000. Your car, you're going to take the 1000 Your car's worth a 1000 if you put it on the internet and you get far more prices, then that's what your value the car is. The value of the car is always the highest price paid. So why why do I say that? Well, everything has a value. And if everything has a value, to honour that, you have to pay the, the correct value for it. So this word honour actually means when we're honouring someone, we're paying the correct price for them. So... The next question is, well, how much is a human worth? And I don't mean like, oh, your kidney's worth 10,000. I'm talking about actually how much as a whole intact human being are we worth? Well, this, you're probably gonna get this now and work out where I'm going. Um, the highest price paid for a human being at any particular point, and it is a fixed price, it's never gonna go down because it's a constant, is Jesus. So every single one of us has the value of the highest price. And the reason why we're the highest price is because um, if you were to, to give anything of yourself, the highest price you could pay as a person would be give your own life. Uh, so that would be the highest, the highest price you could pay for anything would be you'd give your own life, right? So any father or mother would give their life for their child so that the child... You, so the value of that child obviously would be at least its parents' lives. But interesting enough, with Jesus, when God sent his own son to die, he didn't actually give you less of a price. And this is why it's kind of so offensive 
when uh, Jesus was the son. Um, because in Hebrew culture, actually, the son is equal to the father. Um, so when someone's going around, it's like, oh, I'm actually the son. Um, <laughs> it just is like, what? Are you saying it's the same as saying I'm God, and that's why it's so offensive. And and you notice as you read the Bible why people are so triggered. Like ah, oh, you you just said you you have the same value as God, and actually yes, <laughs> um, he is the same as God. Uh, but interesting enough, in Hebrew culture, the most valuable for, thing for a man is is his legacy, um, which is his son. And so if a man was to give up his own son, it would actually be worth more than him giving up his own life because it's not only equal in value to him, it's also his legacy. So he's giving up not only himself, he's giving up his legacy. So when Jesus died for you, you weren't actually just divinely exchanged for the same value as the God of the universe. You were given in exchange for the God of the universe is legacy. He's given you everything and the legacy. You are equal to his legacy. So when we look at to honour someone, the correct price to pay for someone is to treat them by the highest price and the highest price for every single human being that is around you is equal to the God of the universe's legacy. And so I'm not saying don't don't hear me wrong. Don't like oh we're all gods. No 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 no. If you if you if you start to think that, um, get a father and mother in your life right now and um, a spiritual and uh, they will help you work through this. <laughs> don't just go. Don't nobody go away. I'm God. <laughs> um, what 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 that means to say is when we treat one another, we need to start treating each other like they are equal to Jesus. And what I mean like that is if you aren't treating someone how you would treat Jesus, then you're treating them less than what Jesus would have treated them. And that's when, you know, when Jesus starts to go, it's like, oh, you, you left a homeless man. You walked past him. That's when you left me, you know? So, you, I'm, I'm, and this is not, it's not a condemning way at all, but what I'm trying to urge and assist is, we need to, we need to look at the way that we create a culture and a culture of honour is a culture where we start to look at each other actually how valuable they are. And in, that includes ourselves, So that when we interact with one another, we talk to each other like they are that valuable. That means that when we do something less than what we're worth, then that means that we need to, we need to be around people that can get alongside us and say, hey, you're better than that, don't do that. Um, don't gossip. You know, be gentle, be kind be generous, be loving. And it's all about creating that culture. And, and and we can do that, you know. There's a few, we need to we need to have boundaries. I'm not saying we don't have boundaries. We need boundaries. We can't let people walk over us because actually that is not kingdom. Um, but we do need to go low and serve and that's different. Um, we do need to be kind and loving, but that doesn't mean that we need to empower people to sit in their sin. Actually, it means sometimes it's a harder conversation to say, you can't keep going on like that, man. That's that's not who you are. You need to be better than that. You know you're better than that. Hey, we all agreed to be part of this thing together. And this thing means that we're going to look more and more like Christ. And what you're doing right now is not making you look more like Christ. It's, I love you. You need to stop. When we create this culture of honour and this, this core value of myself and Jens and what we're working on, ourselves is to constantly learn how to treat ourselves more like the value Christ has given us and to treat everyone else more like the value Christ has given them and as we start to do that when people who are outside the church look at the culture of the church and they'll go oh those are the kindest people that we've ever met those are the most generous people we've ever met whatever is going on with those people I want it whatever is going on because those people are joyful those people are always happy i want i want that i want to be a part of that hopefully <laughs> i'm like got a runny nose because i was quite sick this uh this week but i'm better now so almost um 
I don't want to, I'm trying to keep track of time. So just, just to, just to urge you, look at the way that you're living your life and are there any behaviors that other people may have tapped up on and go, is that worthy of who I am? And also, is there a group of behaviors with a group of friends that I have that is worthy of who you guys are? And if you think it isn't, sit down and have a conversation and just say, hey, do you think we should be doing this? And instead of going, oh, we should be clean, instead of going, oh, we should have a Jesus culture, sit down amongst yourselves and say, well, what does a good Christian Jesus culture, a culture of honour look like? And how can we define it? And how can we all buy into it together so that way we can start to change the culture that we live in and let it impact the wider world that we're encountering. I'm hoping I haven't gone on too long. Um, I lost my time out at the bottom, so I'm praying that I've hit about the right time and I don't want to go on too long. Um, so if uh, I believe I'm probably at work tomorrow, uh, in a couple of days when this releases, so I won't be in the chat afterwards. Um, but if you guys have any questions, feel free to um, message me. I'm on the gram, um, uh, not on Facebook, but I'm on Instagram uh, and Jen. And if you have any questions about anything we've said, anything you don't agree with, we love it because um, <laughs> we get to talk it out and work through it. Um, and an honouring culture isn't one where we all have to agree. Actually, it's... It's not like that at all. We're not about what the world is doing at the moment. We're not a council culture. We don't want to council people that disagree with us. We don't want to blame people that to pass the buck. It's not blame culture. This is not a council culture. We want to create a kingdom culture and honor a culture. So just message us if there's anything that you want to talk about, anything you agree with, disagree with. Um, and if anything you're struggling with that you want prayer for, I'm sure the rest of the team will, uh, will be able to offer that. So God bless you all, appreciate your time, um, love you all and stay blessed.